We gather here tonight to mark the 104th anniversary of the Armenian Genocide. Every Armenian here tonight, and every Armenian alive today, has an ancestor who was a victim, and stories of horror, despair, and death have been passed down from generation to generation. You can't tell me that the disappearance of my maternal great-grandfather's parents and sister was an accident. Denial will not change the two-year death march that my paternal great-grandparents miraculously survived. We were reduced to less than half a million people, but more than 100 years later, we have shown that while there was horror and death, there is also perseverance and survival. In fact, my two wonderful children, Jack and Sona, are here this evening. When I look at them, and any other beautiful Armenian child, I see not only the sacrifice of our ancestors, the sacrifice our ancestors made, but the promise of our future. With each passing year, the strength of our Armenian community around the world and here in the United States grows. But we cannot let the passage of time reduce our resolve. Now more than ever, we must keep our collective quest for justice alive and thriving. Despite the fact that the President of the United States has continued to remain silent in his first term of office, the long-standing and strong support we will see here this evening from our important advocates in Congress will send a clear message that we will not rest, we cannot rest, until the systematic atrocities committed against our ancestors 104 years ago are recognized for what they were, genocide. Let me be clear, no nation deserves a veto over U.S. human rights policy. No foreign power is entitled to a gag rule against American remembrance of that genocide. It's in this spirit that the Armenian Genocide Resolutions were introduced this week in both houses of Congress. Spearheaded by Representatives Schiff and Villarakis in the House, and Senators Cruz and Menendez in the Senate, these bipartisan measures aim to, once and forever, place America on the side of truth. By ensuring ongoing official U.S. recognition of the Armenian Genocide, so that remembrances like this will have the full force of the U.S. government. By rejecting, as a matter of policy, the denial of the Armenian Genocide, so that remembrances like this will never be threatened by a foreign power. By encouraging expanded public education about the Armenian Genocide, so that remembrances like this can help inform and inspire U.S. leadership in preventing future atrocities. It is my great honor to stand with the supporters of these resolutions, these ardent supporters in Congress who have stood with our community in the face of significant pressure and misinformation. It is my great honor to stand with them and with all of you this evening. Before we begin, I'd also like to recognize the presence of a few notable guests this evening. We have Maryland General Assembly Delegate Lori Charkudian. Yes, thank you, Lori. Ambassador John Evans. modern-day Morgenthau committed to a principled U.S. policy on the Armenian Genocide. Thank you, Ambassador Evans. Tufik Paglini, the chairman of the In Defense of Christians. We also have Rafi, Rafi Hamparian, the national chairman of the Armenian National Committee of America. And Lani Tota, the national board member for the Armenian Assembly of America. Our first speaker tonight is one of our community's strongest and most outspoken supporters, Congressman Frank Cologne. He is the co-chair of the Congressional Caucus on Armenian Issues. Over 20 years ago, I started my first job on Capitol Hill and soon learned that one of our greatest champions was from my home state of New Jersey. Over the course of the last two decades, I've seen Congressman Cologne undertake countless acts in support of our cause. He has left no stone unturned and he is committed to our community as any one of us would be. Most recently, he has taken the lead in advocating for critical U.S. aid to Armenia and Artsakh, and has made a case for the
the importance of passing the Artsakh Travel and Communications Resolution. In fact, I hope you don't mind me saying this, on a recent trip to Armenia, he was told that maybe he shouldn't go to Artsakh, and he went to Artsakh anyway. He does not allow of our community, and we are honored to have him on our side. Congressman Pallone.